On Triple J, that is Diane Young by Vampire Weekend, and Ezra is on the line. So how are you doing this afternoon? Not bad. Where Where are you right now? Currently, I'm in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Oh. I'm touring the States right now. You just played the Austin City Limits Festival on the weekend. Uh-huh. How was playing with, like, Lionel Richie and The Cure? Unfortunately, I didn't get to see uh, see anybody, oh. but uh, it's cool. But maybe next weekend. It's a two-weekend festival, so we got to go back. I tell you what uh, I'm quite excited about, Ezra, is seeing you guys here for the Falls Festival and Southbound Festival, um, trying out these or playing these new songs with all these fancy vocal effects. How does, like, stuff in Diane Young and that uh, happen live? Well, you know, it's it's not that hard. We, um, on Diane Young, uh, originally, you know, we just kind of did it in the studio, but for the live show, we got this box that Ross Tim manipulates at that part of the song. So uh, we come pretty close to getting it to sound like the record. How much t- uh, mucking around was there before you took these songs out on the road to get the stuff right? It definitely took a minute because when we're in the studio, we we really don't worry about how we're going to play this live. You know, we're just focused on making the record as good as possible. So we got together, definitely took a bit of time to figure out, like, oh, how are we going to trigger that sound? Who's going to do what? But, uh, and you know, and it's been a process. We had to, add to do the songs in batches, kind of. I guess uh, another problem would be working out how to play Diane Young without having, like, Sun to Gold and the dudes from Chromio and the Dirty Projectors and all that sitting around a recreation of The Last Supper, like in the video clip. Right, exa- that's actually the hardest part, <laughs> is not having all those people with us. But y- we, we try. We try to make up for it with energy. Can you get a random person in a balaclava to sit up on stage for you to sing into the ear of? Well, maybe. You know, the other day we played a show and there was a girl in the crowd wearing a balaclava and then she threw it on stage and then CT put it on and he drummed a song wearing it. So it's always good to have a balaclava on stage in some capacity. Especially since not only, you know, it's a feature in the Diane Young video clip, but, you know, it's, it, it, balaclavas are mentioned in Horchata. I think there is a balaclava theme going on with Vampire Weekend. No, exactly. We've been repping balaclavas for a long time and it seems like finally this year yeah. they really broke through to the mainstream, like in Spring Breakers, girls wearing pink balaclavas. Mm -hmm. Oh, Tyler, the creator, he's been wearing some balaclavas in the past year or two, but, you know, we've been talking about this phenomenon for a while, so we're we're happy to see it get its due. Even over, uh, you know, in like, in in Russia, where, you know, feminist punk rock bands who are going to jail uh, are wearing, and their fans all wearing balaclavas, no doubt spurred on by Vampire Weekend. Yeah, hopefully. I can't help but remember when Horchata first came out, a lot of people were saying, what's a balaclava? What are these guys talking about? (laughs) This is nonsense. So, you know, it feels pretty good. Ezra is on the line um, from... You're in Nashville, Tennessee, playing there. You playing there tonight? No, I'm playing tomorrow. I've got the day off. Oh, what are you going to do in Nashville, Tennessee? Well, you know, it's it's like a rainy day. It's not what I expected. You know, it's kind of mm. grim. So maybe maybe later on, hit up a honky-tonk or something. Depends how I feel. <laughs> Can you go and just, like, record a, uh, you know, straight-to-wax acetate recording at Jack White Studio? Isn't that what every musician does when they're in Nashville? We could definitely swing by. I don't know if he's in town or I don't know if they just leave the door open or what. Maybe, <laughs> if, you, maybe you have to plan it ahead of time. Come on, dude. Let's check it out. You've been hanging out, I was just saying, you've been hanging out with, with Sun to Gold, you've been hanging out with Chrono, you've been hanging out with Steve Bashimi. Surely that gives you some uh, rite of passage in these places. Oh, definitely. So they might not recognize us, but I, I think hopefully <laughs> if we... You know, drop the Vampire Weekend name. That'll open up a few doors for us. This is a music town, Nashville. <laughs> That's right. Hey, look, do, do you know, is Steve Buscemi going to be making an appearance in Australia? Because he's definitely been very much attached to modern vampires of the city. You know, it seems like he, well... He spends most of his time in Brooklyn these days because that's where they mostly shoot Boardwalk Empire. Yeah. So I don't know how often he gets over to Australia, but uh, he's definitely a national treasure and a a New York legend, so I hope he can kind of come spread the love. Yeah, one day. I tell you what, you, you, I've seen you hanging out with other legends of TV. Um, if you're near a computer, go check out Vampire Weekend's Twitter and have a look at the Guys Night Out tag, um, and you'll see <laughs> you guys hanging out with Gus Fring, with Walt Jr., with Jesse, with Mike, with the brothers Moncada. How did you get it to hang out with the cast of Breaking Bad? Oh, yeah, we went pretty deep that night. Yeah. Well, it was um, kind of a nice coincidence that we were in L.A. for the weekend, and on Saturday night we played a show at Hollywood Bowl was a great show and then we had Sunday the next day was off and we happened to be there and Aaron Paul had organized this big final episode Breaking Bad screening in a cemetery in LA called the Hollywood Forever Cemetery it's a very hot ticket we had to pull some strings to get in there donate some money to charity then we just got to kind of watch this like really cool open air screening of it and they had the whole cast there and they did like a Q&A and stuff so then 
at the after party. We got to rub shoulders with uh, some Breaking Bad legends. It's very exciting. And Weird Al Yankovic, who I don't remember from any of the series of Breaking Bad. Oh, he was there. <laughs> he, he was he was in most seasons, but he, I forget. <laughs> in a balaclava, probably. Yeah, I think so. Uh, are you a fan of Breaking Bad? What did you think of the uh, the final episode? Uh, it definitely stuck with me. I thought it was very satisfying. And the funny thing was that all the other guys had been totally caught up and they were psyched to watch the end, but I'd kind of fallen off. So I really needed to cram in a lot of viewing in the week leading up to it. So it was a very like Breaking Bad intensive week for me. It was like working out for a fun run or something. Yeah, exactly. Because I, I, I don't think I could have truthfully shown my face <laughs> at the big last episode after party if I wasn't caught up. So C. Bashimi, cast of Breaking Bad, what's the next, um, you know, if you could go and hang out with the cast of anywhere, anything, where would it be and who would it be? I guess, I, mean, I don't know, maybe Game of Thrones is the next frontier. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've, we've seen some of those people around at various festivals and stuff, but uh, that's definitely the show that, you know, some band members are most looking forward to coming back. Imagine seeing Game of Thrones people out of character, out of their, uh, out of their period costume, just hanging around at Coachella. That would be good, I think. It happens. It's weird, but, you know, they're just like us. They're, they're just modern people. <laughs> but it, it's a little bit, it is a bit funny. To see, I mean, when you only have seen somebody wearing that, that type of stuff, and then, you know, they got, they're wearing a headband and some Converse or something, it's a trip. Yeah, it's like seeing uh, Jesse back in his, uh, in his meth cooking gear, and I was like, dude, that's not how we left you, you're not getting back into that. Nope, not going not gonna to do any spoilers, <laughs> right. if you haven't seen it. I'm talking to Ezra from Vampire Weekend. Hey, I'm going to put on, um, since you mentioned the Hollywood Cemetery, which is where you saw the, uh, the Breaking Bad finale, hanging out with the cast of Breaking Bad, I'm going to put on Hollywood Forever Cemetery Sings by Father John Misty, just to set the mood, if that's alright with you. Sure. Alright, and we'll be back with Ezra after this on Triple J. This is just a little bit of Jessica from Major Lazer. You're, you're here for the Falls Festival and, and Southbound and a few other sideshows. Major Lazer are here for the big day out just a couple of weeks later. Do you want to stick around and do a bit of uh, Jessica with Diplo and his mates? Not a bad idea. I didn't know that they were coming through town. I mean, who knows? Maybe I will stick around. We can uh, sweeten the deal. He's also bringing out Snoop Lion as well, so it'll be like a, a legendary cast. Oh, well, that wouldn't be a bad group of people to travel <laughs> around Australia with. Have you done Have you done Jessica with Major Lazer up on stage yet? No, we never have. I don't think it's impossible. I think, I think it might happen at some point in the future, but, you know, we're on tour all the time. Those guys are all over the place, so, you know, we just got to wait for the right moment. Would you, you'd, it would be hard, though, to sing, because you sang it into, like, a computer speaker or something, a computer microphone. Yeah, I just, I just recorded the vocals on my laptop, because right? I first started doing it years ago when we were on tour. It took a long time for it to come out. Yeah, we'd have to figure something out, because, yeah, I've never actually performed it. And, and doing that whilst, um, you know, when you're on stage with Diplo, you have to, of course, have your ass in the air doing that kind of express yourself twerk thing going on. So doing that whilst holding the laptop may be a little difficult to organise. That's true. I, I didn't even think about that. I really got to start training. <laughs> I don't want to make this happen. It's all right. You've got plenty of time. Well, you're going to be here for the Falls Festival in Marion Bay, Lawn and Byron Bay. Southbound Festival in Bustleton, Western Australia. And the sideshow dates... Melbourne's Festival Hall on the 6th of January and Sydney's Horden Pavilion on the 8th of January. That Melbourne show is in all ages as well, as of course are all the festivals. It's going to be fun. You're going to be spending your New Year's with us here in Australia. Yeah, it's the first time we've ever come to Australia at that time of year. Never had a New Year's in Australia, so I'm definitely excited about it. What do you normally do for New Year's? I guess a lot of New Year's tend to be in New York, hang out with friends, go to a party or something. You know, try not to put too much pressure on it because... I think we've all been there. You can start stressing about what to do on New Year's and you end up like going from party to party and you miss everything. You know, you're in a cab at midnight. And you're watching the countdown in the back of a New York cab on that little TV that sort of cuts in and out from reception. Yeah, that, that's a, that's your, your worst nightmare. But that's why you got to kind of, you know, you might get invited to a bunch of parties. You got to pick one or two mm -hmm. to stick to them. Well, you can, you can be hanging out with uh, a bunch of great bands like uh, Fly Facilities, Gosling, Grizzly Bear, Hermitude, London Grammar, MGMT, Pond. The Roots are going to be there, the Wombats, Violent Femmes, Solange will be there as well. Um, I think you're going to have a great time uh, in Australia for New Year's. Amazing. Oh, yes, amazing indeed. Ezra, thank you very much for chatting to Triple J today, sir. We'll see you at the end of the year. Yeah, thanks for having me.